Okay, the first kind of the smallest basic type of stoichiometry dealing with mole ratios. Mole ratio, again, is just a comparison where we're comparing two different substances based on that chemical equation. Today, we're going to take it one step further, but this extra step that we're going to do today, we've already done before. Okay, we've already done this back in Unit 6. So, again, it's just adding on, taking what we've already done and applying it in a new light. So, here we go. These are called mole to gram problems. So, if you take a look at page 3, right? Page 3, guys, you have that very similar roadmap at the top of page 3, but there's one extra fraction. This is a two-step problem. So type 2, this is going to be a two-step. We wrote one step in there yesterday. This is going to be two-step. And what I mean by that is we're going to have two additional fractions. We're using that same reaction as we did yesterday. What would that reaction be? Can anybody remember it? There we go. Decomposition of aluminum oxide. Same process. Jot down your given and your wanted. What's my given? What am I starting with here? That's my reaction. But what's my given? What am I starting? What's the amount that I'm starting with? There it is. 13 moles of aluminum oxide. And what am I trying to get to? What's my wanted? What's the target? What oxygen? Grams. So it makes a difference, guys. It's not just saying oxygen or a new substance because yesterday everything was moles and moles. Today, it's not just moles and moles. We're also using grams. Okay. So here's kind of a quick trick that I try to get my students to start to realize. When you take a look and you write down your given and your wanted, you can kind of identify how many steps in general your process is going to be for each, excuse me, each problem. Bless you. If it's moles of one substance and moles of another substance, so if it's two different substances, it's going to be at least one step. If it's moles and moles, it's going to be just one step. But if you have grams and moles and two different substances, it's going to be two steps. Okay, so one for converting substance and one for converting from moles to grams. You'll see what I mean as we go through these different problems. So that when we get into mixed practice tomorrow, it'll be something that may help you out and make it a little, go a little bit quicker. All right, start by writing our given. We've got 13 moles of aluminum oxide. We're trying to get to grams of oxygen in the end. So let your units drive your math. Where is our unit for moles of aluminum oxide going to go? On the bottom, because it was on the top. So moles of Al2O3. Can we go right from one substance to another? What do we have to use? It allows us to convert between substances. What ratio? What, what did we learn yesterday, guys? Yeah, the mole ratio. I'm going to keep saying that over and over, guys. That's what allows you to convert between two different substances is the mole ratio. So if you've got to go from one substance to another, you've got to use the mole ratio. And that's exactly where we're at right here. So mole of aluminum oxide is on the bottom. What's going to be my unit on the top? There we go, moles of O2. There's my mole ratio. So when we're doing a type 2 and we're going from moles to grams, okay, our mole ratio is our new, our second fraction. What is my mole ratio here for these two? Three moles of oxygen and two moles of aluminum oxide. Am I done with my problem? No. So now is our new step. How do we go from moles of something to grams of something? Ooh, I hear two. I hear atomic mass and molar mass. What's the difference? And it's all added up, right? Very similar. Atomic mass <coughs> is when you have just a single element. Molar mass is where you look at the formula. All right, good review for our midterm that is coming up. Moles of oxygen, two grams of oxygen. One mole of oxygen, how many grams? What's our molar mass here? No. That is incorrect. What did you say? 
Nope, no, it is not. What is our molar mass here? Yeah, why is it got to be doubled? Because our formula, this is the difference, guys, between molar mass and atomic mass. Atomic mass is just one element. The mass of just one atom. But molar mass, you've got to look at the formula. So this is doubled. Brinkelhoff is doubled. This is where writing Brinkelhoff is going to, on your tests and quizzes is going to become important. You need to make sure you take you keep track of those. So what is my molar mass here? We're going to round it to about what? Right, it would be 31.9998. I'm just going to round it to 32 for the sake of space. Go ahead and do the math. What do we get for a final answer here? 624 is what you should have. If you did not get that, double check that you plugged it into your calculator correctly. 13 times 3 times 32 divided by 2, or your 31.994. All right. Easy. Is this really, guys, anything brand new? It's just putting the pieces together in a new way, but we've already learned all of the different, you know, sub pieces to it. Only if I ask you for sig figs do you need to do sig figs, okay? So if you round it to sig figs, I'm going to count it. If you left it like this, I would count it as well. Why don't you guys go ahead and try the next one? So as you're working through, check your work. This is how it should be set up. What's our molar mass for aluminum? About 27 grams. What is it, though? 26 point? All right, nine eight. So when you're doing this, guys, you can always simplify your fractions before you start plugging in, or you can just go right to your calculator. Either way, I'm going to simplify this. Get rid of my threes. So really, it's just basically four times twenty-seven. So your final answer is something about one hundred and eight. What do you guys get for your answer? Okay. Now, if we were to port this to correct sig figs, it would be one. You're never going to report anything, guys, to one sig fig unless I ask you for um, specific um, to report your answer to sig figs. You can just round it one or two decimal places is sufficient. Questions on this? That's type two. Type three, we're going to see, is pretty much the same thing, except we're just flipping it around. Take a look at your roadmap that you have. In type 3, we're doing the reverse of what we just did in type 2. It's still going to be a two-step process. okay? But now we're starting with a gram amount and we're ending up with moles. okay? So it's doing the flip or the reverse of what we just did. Same process as always. I'm going to jot down my um, formula again, the equation. You guys should jot the equation down as well, the balance uh, equation. Two moles of aluminum oxide. Breaks down into four moles of aluminum plus three moles, excuse me, of oxygen. What's my given here in this problem? 25 grams of aluminum oxide. What am I trying to get to? What's my wanted? What's my wanted? How many moles of aluminum? I want you guys to go ahead and try this one on your own. Starting with grams, getting it back to moles first, then we can convert between substances. So again, like I was saying at the beginning of class, when you look at your given and your wanted, all right, you see two different substances. That's a one-step problem right there. You should do at least one step to convert between substances. Grams and moles, that's a second step. And we see that once we plugged it in. First things first, we had to go from grams back to moles. Then we could convert substances. When you plug in and do the math, notice I reduced. You don't have to reduce it down. That's up to you. What do you get for a final answer? 25 times 2 is 50. So it should be somewhere about just under 0. 0.5. Is it 0. 0.48 or 0.49? 0. 0.49 moles of aluminum. Good? Easy? Is it anything, guys, completely brand new? No, it's more just, it's more to remember, but you don't really have to remember it all if you let your units drive your math, guys. If you write down what you're starting with and you just kind of work by your units to get to where you want to be. Go ahead and try the next problem in your notes. 
So I'm going to start working out the answer, guys. Again, we're starting with grams. Got to get it back to moles first. Using our molar mass, 26.98 grams of aluminum are gone. I encourage you as well, as we get into more difficult stoichiometry problems, cross out your units once you get them to cancel. It's just good um, bookkeeping to make it a little bit smoother and more organized for you. Moles of aluminum on the bottom. We're going to have moles of aluminum oxide on the top. That's our mole ratio. That allows us to convert between substances. Four on the bottom, two on the top. So we can cancel those out, two and one. <coughs> what do we get then for a final answer when you plug it in? How many moles of aluminum oxide? Should be right around 0.46 moles. Questions? Better on that one than maybe the first one? Now, where do you think we're going after this? Type 4. Type four. What do you think type 4 is going to be? Oh my gosh. Mass. mass to mass, okay? Now, we could go to atoms and stuff, but like I was saying, I was telling Zach a few minutes ago, we don't do that a lot, guys, because we can't count atoms in the lab. Scientists, chemists are really, what they're working on are these type, the type 4 the mass to mass problems because this is what you're going to use in a lab setting because we can measure out grams of substances. We don't have a mole counter, right? We've got a balance that measures grams. This, these are the types of problems that, I mean, I've done these for years. Okay, When I was in the lab in grad school, using these, these calculations all the time. Okay, So type four, Gram to gram. So let's go ahead and write down our formula again, our chemical equation. Aluminum oxide, breaking down into aluminum plus oxygen, and it's balanced. Given and wanted. What's my given and what's my wanted? What am I starting with? What am I trying to get to? 25 grams of aluminum oxide. And what's my wanted? How many grams of aluminum? So now, if you're thinking, when things get all mixed together, and that's what's going to happen tomorrow in class, we're going to practice this all class period. Okay? <clears throat> and on your homework tonight, you're going to practice this some. When you write your given and your wanted, you can start to picture in your mind how many steps it's going to take to get to the final answer. You know two different substances. That's going to be at least one step. We said that moles and grams is another step. But now we have gram to gram. So what are we going to have to do with these substances before we can do anything else? Can we compare grams of one to grams of another? No, because they have different sized atoms. So we have to get back to what first? What can we compare? Moles. So guys, when you see gram to gram, two, it's going to be two steps. Because you've got to go from grams back to moles, and then from moles to grams. That's two steps right there. And then the third step is going to be substance to substance. So what we have here, these type 4, these are going to be three-step problems. This is where the T-chart really proves itself useful. If you've been fighting it all year, this is where things may get a little hectic for you. I'm telling you, if you can master it, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So again, start with the same thing we always do. Write your given down, grams of aluminum oxide. These are also the problems, guys, where if you don't put grams and moles and the substances in there, you may get confused very quickly, and these can be a lot harder than they actually are. I want you guys to go ahead and try this one. Try it on your own. It's very similar. We've done the pieces. Try it, and then we'll come back together. <coughs> so grams of aluminum oxide on the bottom. That's going <coughs> to... Excuse me. It's going to take us back to moles of aluminum oxide. All right. <clears throat> grams, one mole of aluminum oxide. Our molar mass, we said, was about 102 for that compound. That got us back to moles. Now, once we get back to moles, we can convert substances. So our next fraction we write is going to be our mole ratio. <clears throat> moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom. Moles of aluminum will be on the top. Cancel those out. Where am I getting my numbers for my mole ratio from? Where am I getting them from? Nope. The coefficients, right? Four over two. Two over one. 
And then our last fraction, because now we want to get back to grams. So we had to go from grams to moles, switch substances, and then back to moles. So we have one mole of aluminum down here. Our molar mass is 26.98 grams of aluminum. <clears throat> what do you get for a final answer when you do all of the math? How many grams of aluminum? What's that? 13.23. That's what Garrett has. Do we agree? Absolutely. 13.23 grams. So what this is saying is if we had 25 grams of aluminum oxide as our reactant, if we went and broke that compound down into its individual components based on this reaction, we should end up with a total of 13.23 grams of aluminum. If we underwent this decomposition reaction, we'd end up with that much. If it went to completion, do you think reactions will ever go to 100% completion? Meaning every single last atom is going to react? No. Okay, and that's something we will talk about more um, early next week. Is this anything completely brand new, guys? We know each individual piece. We've done it. We've done mole ratios. We've done moles and masses. It's just putting it all together, and that's where practice comes in. Go ahead and work the next problem. While you guys are putting your labs away, I'm going to work this problem out. So check your work <clears throat> when you get back to your seat. I haven't given it to you yet. All right, so when you get this all set up, guys, this is what it should look like. I've reduced, I've crossed out my units. What do you end up with when you do the math? When you plug it into your calculator, what do you do? Or what do you get? I got like 47.27. 47.2 ish is what you should get, I believe. Questions? All right, with the rest of this period, you are working on page nine in your packets.